I think I've had three defining moments in my life. And the first one came when I was going through my divorce and I was having a really bad day and I just remember that I was laying on the floor in my bedroom in a fetal position crying. And I know I had to have been there for hours. And finally, I, I just thought I'm gonna end up being committed. And I had a daughter in kindergarten at the time and I, I just couldn't do that to her. And so I got up and I remember looking at myself in the mirror and saying, you're not gonna let th this happen to you like this. You're gonna, you're gonna move on and do something. And I did, I was able to start moving forward from that point. So what was the reason that you were on the floor in the feeder position to start with? I was feeling overwhelmed. We had just moved from New York to Florida. I didn't have anybody. I didn't know anybody. I was in a brand new neighborhood, so I didn't even, I was one of the first houses, so I didn't even have any neighbors. And I think I was just feeling lost and I, I lost my self-esteem. I think that, that it was just a, a combination of all of those things. Didn't know what I was going to do for a job because I just moved here a few weeks ago and didn't even have a job yet. And feeling helpless and lost uh, with myself. And and what was going on with your marriage? Well, he was having an affair. He had started an affair with some his secretary, and yeah, you know. He, found, he came home and told me that he wanted to leave, and he did. He moved out. So then what was the next defining moment? The next defining moment came, well, I think I should step back and just say that as we were going through the divorce, he got more and more violent. He'd always verbally abused me. I didn't realize that he was gaslighting me. I never heard that term until recently, but that's what he was doing my whole marriage. But then he started getting violent um, when we were going through the divorce. And I actually uh, had an incident where the police came and everything. And the domestic violence shelter called me to see if I wanted counseling. And I said, oh, I don't need it, of course. And they said, well, what about your daughter? And I said, well, yeah. <laughs> and so, of course, they got me there because you could only attend if, you know, your child could only attend if you did too. And so I think it was only the first or second week I went to the support group, the week, they were weekly support groups. And I think it was the, you know, only the first or second meeting that I'd gone to. And they had a guest speaker, and that turned out to be Annie. <laughs> and she was talking about her own domestic violence issues in her past and what it took her to leave. And then she was talking about she had just come back from Beijing for, from the women's conference there. And it, it just, she just really inspired me. I, I just was just waiting on every word coming out of her. And afterwards, I knew I had to go up and talk to her. So uh, afterwards I went up and I talked to her and we seemed to have uh, you know, an instant rapport and we made arrangements to meet together you know, in the future and we did. And you know, I've never looked back. Uh, it was a turning point for me where I, I stopped looking at the past and started looking at what I could do now. I could finally be me. I could finally do the things I wanted to do because I didn't have somebody controlling and manipulating everything I, I wanted to do. And so it, it was like the world opened up. I had all these opportunities now and I knew that I liked what she was doing and I knew I wanted to somehow do similar work or you know do work with her. So that was my second defining moment. And I think the third one was 
something I still struggled with through going through the divorce was I heard the phrase before about, you know, um, that you're only responsible for your own actions, but I've heard it, but I didn't buy into it. And for some reason, I happened to be at a meeting, uh, one of the support group meetings, and they had guest speaker again, and it was a husband and wife um, marriage or counselors. And they said that, again, that we're only responsible for our own actions. And for some reason, that time, I really, it sunk in and I believed it. I bought into it. I owned it. And I didn't let that hold me back anymore. And it was almost like that was the third thing, the third piece I needed to really move forward and not look back. Okay, that's good. Anything else? How about advice? I think I did. Um, my advice would be that you are only responsible for your own actions, so you better make good use of them. <laughs> And, uh, you know, just to, to be successful at something to me is to be passionate about something and to use what, it makes, what makes me me, like I said before, was nurturing and mentoring and trying to help others. And that, just be true to yourself and keep doing those things. That's the best advice is just to keep doing what, what makes you, you. Okay, that's good.